Yeah, I'm, I'm about to do a, a video project on Ben Strait. So I just wanted to see your opinion as someone mm -hmm. who plays against him in practice every day, sees his craft. He's an all-star player, mm -hmm. but I don't feel like people know what mm -hmm. he's really good at. So I just mm -hmm. wanted your opinion as someone who's seen him so often and what his skill set really mm -hmm. brings to that team. Because he's a homegrown, yet he's one of the mm -hmm. better safeties in the league. And for the, that defense, which is one of the best defenses in the league, it elevates at such a high level. Yeah. Uh, two, three, my guy. That's the feet. Goes to the air. It's intercepted. Benjamin Strait. Ben Strait, he is absolutely an all-star. So first and foremost on that. Mitchell goes to the right. Ball is picked up. Interception. Vienna Vikings and Benjamin Strait. And he does such a great job. He's one of the best homegrowns Vienna has and does a great job with his leadership with really being a glue guy for that defensive secondary for the Vienna Vikings. Benjamin straight into the end zone for the touchdown. So I'm glad people are starting to more recognize his craft. If you know me, you know that was not planned. Like, I do not plan my interview questions. I kind of just go off of the vibe with some previous knowledge and ask some questions just come rather conversationally. And then towards the end of the interview, I was like, oh, fuck, I'm not big time enough. To, uh, to get messages from every player that I need to when I'm going to talk about some of their teammates. So I thought, let me just grab this opportunity to talk to Reese Horn about Ben Strait. And that's who we're going to be doing a video on today. Ben Strait just making it to the final of the ELF, which is coming up in a couple weeks' time. I'll link the actual date and everything in the description if you want to go buy tickets or you're going to want to go watch on Game Pass. I'll link both of those in the description. Not sponsored officially, but... Why not spread the love? Over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff to do with the players in the championship game on evals on Ben Strait, or some evals on maybe some of the rookie of the year contenders and stuff like that, or just players I enjoy in both of the teams. It's Ryan Fire, and it's Vienna Vikings, and today's Vienna Vikings safety, Benjamin Strait. Ooh. In terms of our charts, they didn't really show us anything we didn't already know. We know that Benjamin Strait plays majority safety. We know that he favors left side. We know that he doesn't play corner or linebacker unless they're pushed against the goal line he's forced to. In fact, in multiple games I watched, I only saw him line up a corner on one time. So this didn't really tell us anything we didn't already know. So not crazy important, but definitely worth mentioning. Two for fucking two. Zero problems. Now, I mentioned that Ben Strait plays majority safety. I've showed the percentages. If you want to go back and pause them and look at each individual game and where he land up in certain places, that's fine. A lot of people ask of how do you categorize a free safety or strong safety or a certain linebackers or whatnot. It matters where they start when the ball is snapped. As you can see, starting from the six yards, we have the strong safety alignment. Anything after 8 starts going into free safety, but they're a little bit deeper, they go into the free safety left, free safety right. And this is the majority where straight operates. Again, straight is here on the snap. When he starts, his position, where his feet are, is where we will be allocated. The best way to describe straight in a couple of words is an instinctual safety. It makes a lot of plays in the ball, he is around the ball very often, and his coverage is one of the reasons for that. He is a decent to above average coverage player. He can cover his tight end. He has the physicality to do that. He has good enough hips and trigger and burst on his breaks to cover receivers and running backs out of the backfield as well. It's his quick burst reaction speed that allows him to get a lot more of these interceptions. We'll get onto his ball skills in a minute, but a lot lesser safeties do not have the awareness, the spatial awareness, the ability to track the ball in the air, and the concentration on the ball in the air that he has in order to get some of these interceptions. Some of these interceptions are not clean. Some of them is heads going around 360 degrees and he's reacting last second to a play, or the ball's kind of falling into his path and he's able to make a play on it. That's what makes him pretty damn good zone safety, is because he can feel these players in his area. He doesn't have to keep turning his head away from the quarterback. He has that instincts, that natural ability and natural awareness to feel where players are at. It's not just these messy fumble-like interceptions he's able to attain. He's also extremely good at judging the ball trajectory and the ball speed and path of the ball towards the receiver. And he's able to jump a lot of routes. We've seen that multiple times where he just snipes the ball. He cuts through the receiver's route to get to the ball. And I think that's resolved in his ball skills. I 
I touched briefly on this trigger in the last point because I want to leave it to this. His trigger is among the best in the league in terms of his position. He reacts extremely quickly to run or pass situations and is able to get into the correct positions to fill gaps and to make the aforementioned plays on the ball. And it's this aggressiveness when it comes to his hand fighting which allows him to make so many breakups. It doesn't matter if the receiver is bigger than him, if he's on a tight end, or if they're a little bit a step ahead, he's going to be very active at the catch point, and that separates him from a lot of other DBs in this league. Combine the trigger, the aggressive hands, the ball playing ability, the instincts, and the coverage, and he is an absolute ball hawk when it comes to getting the rock. He was tied first with European interceptions with four in a year. He also scored, but interceptions have also been a part of his game that's been very prevalent. 2023 and 2022, he was able to register interceptions. Even as a rookie, he was an all-star, which is incredibly impressive. Now, this one might be a bit decisive, but Ben Strait is not an elite tackler. Now, he does have instances where he's able to wrap up successfully, able to get to the running back, make some good tackles and affect the line of scrimmage or become the last man on the player that's received the ball. He also has no doubt in coming into the box and putting his nose into places where a lot of other defensive backs wouldn't be comfortable. However, sometimes there are technical parts which he'll get wrong. He'll kind of storm right past running backs or ball carriers at some points. Gets a little bit overzealous sometimes. Doesn't go as low other times as you would want him to you can tell he definitely wants to hit them and he is a headhunter like Reese Horn said but technically in terms of proficiency level he isn't as high level as some of his contemporaries he doesn't break down a ton when he's going in for these tackles and that has affected sometimes with him getting ran over because he isn't set he hasn't got this stability in his base either that or he will just go straight through them and you can tell he isn't exactly looking where he's going in these instances sometimes wrapping up as well he won't fully grasp into them he'll come at a bit of an odd angle so something to do with the pursuit maybe not being 100 percent. again i think it comes down to locating where he is and squaring up rather than just firing at all cylinders for what i can tell from the tape he doesn't normally do this when he is the sole tackler or when he's the last line of defense this is normally when he's trying to force a turnover but nine times out of ten, I think coaches would prefer reliability in the tackling aspect. Okay, another one. A little bit controversial, I think. But Benjamin Strait is a good athlete. He doesn't have elite level speed of another safety like Chad Walren, for example, possesses. At times, he'll mistrack the ball in the air. Sometimes he'll maybe overestimate how much distance he can cover. In the rack yardage, he won't storm down as fast in this open space. Again, his trigger is good, but closing distance, kind of like I said about Flamel Zimon, isn't elite level. And kind of like other safeties I've looked at on this channel, he isn't really required to go hash to hash. Usually he will be on one side. He very little played in the middle and was required to go hash to hash. When we saw him against people like Tekadam, who had the speed advantage on the outside, they were able to outmaneuver him. And there we go. All done. Benjamin Strait evaluation finished. Probably going to do someone on fire next for an evaluation. I'm not sure who yet, but if you have any suggestions, let me know. That should be good. Other public service announcements. I'm trying to get to the game. Quite a lot of people have asked me if I'm going to the game. Uh, I need to have money to get to the game. You know what I mean? Like I need to be able to get a bus ticket to get to the airport. So I'm still waiting on that to come through. Hopefully that will come through soon. Speaking of which, memberships, if you want to get memberships, this video is going to be out today, which is like the fucking, I need to check for my phone then by recording on my phone, which is, uh, I think, the third uh, Wednesday, and then this will be available publicly on the Thursday. So if you guys want to pay for a membership, it's about a pound a month, go for it. Early access to videos and whatnot, just trying to diversify the channel a little bit, give some people who want to support a little bit more reason to do so. So... That's everything I've got. ELF Live on Thursday is going to be moved to the weekend. And then championship game, which is going to be good. Like I said, all this stuff linked in the championship game down below. Um, and that is, I think, all I've got. Masters next week, I think. I don't really know. The university already told me what's going on with that. It's been kind of stressful. But <laughs> I guess we'll find out. I'll rock up and 
sitting to say, I don't fucking know what I'm going to do with that. It's a problem for another day, but we'll, I guess we'll find out. Thank you guys very much. See you next time. Stay sharp and goodbye.